Brock. Today we're going to be making the Fierce Adity Sword from the Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. Majora's Mask was a direct sequel to the Ocarina of Time on the N64 released by Nintendo. Now even though Ocarina of Time was a way better game, Nathan, Majora's Mask is still one of my favorite Zelda titles. So, as you can tell already, uh, I'm using the foam mat, so it's going to be a foam sword, which means you can take it to conventions, it's safe, uh, you can take it around on Halloween, I guess, if you wanted to. So it's not really going to be a weapon or a threat to anybody, but it's still going to look pretty cool, I hope, but I haven't started yet. So, first step, you're going to grab your box, your scissors, and your marker. I'm just going to freehand this with the marker. Uh, collapse my box, I didn't cut it up because I want it to be you know, kind of big. So the blade's probably going to be about this one, about that big. So, here we go. I only drew half of it because now I can cut that out and flip it over so I have an identical match. Okay, so I traced it all out and I made this little protrusion here. Uh, just go along with my madness for now. I think it's going to work. So keep that. And then I'm going to trace one other thing here. And there we go. Now, cut that one out as well. So this is what I have so far. Uh, I realized this after, but I should have made this a little bit longer so it can come into the hilt so it's a lot stronger. So when you do yours, just add a little bit extra on there. I'm just going to draw it on when I actually do it. But anyways, get your foam mat. Uh, when you buy this, I suggest trying to find the easy cut stuff because some of this is really hard to cut through. So find the easy cut stuff and it comes right off, no problem. So there's two sides to it. There's a rough side and then there's a smooth side. I'm going to trace on the rough side and that's going to be the inside of the sword when I double layer it because I want to have a nice smooth surface as my final. As you can see, I only traced this part of the blade. That's because the foam isn't big enough, right? So we're going to have to kind of jigsaw it together, I guess. There we go. So I don't know if the camera's picking that up or not. So what I made was two, bra two blades for the left, two blades for the right, and then two hilts. Uh, I'm going to make two more of these, but I'm going to do the full cutout next time. I'm not going to show myself tracing out the rest of the pattern because I'm sure you guys get it. But I'm just going to make sure when you trace the bottom of the blade here, make sure you go all the way up to here, right? You don't want to just trace it down to here. We need that extra little bit because these are pretty thin. So we're going to double them up to make it a bit thicker. So these are the patterns I traced out. That's everything for the sword basically. So just cut it all out and then follow the next step. All right, so I cut everything out and I labeled it. So this is right top, left bottom, et cetera like that. So what I'm gonna do now is just kind of give these uh, a little bit of a measure and then gonna make some more cuts. I'm gonna show that obviously. But I just wanted to show you guys, little, get a whole bunch of comments, how hard it was to cut through this. Uh, about the stuff that said easy cut for a good reason. So it cuts right through. It's a bit strenuous on the hand after a while, especially when you cut out all that. But it could be a lot worse. When I originally cut this out, I purposely made these come all the way down here, and this come all the way up here. That's so there's some overlap, right? So it's a bit stronger. So, what I'm going to do is on one of these, I'm going to cut it. Just trying to decide which one. Here we go. Now, when I glue these two together, this will fit right in there. I'm just going to show you the cuts I made really quick, and then I'm going to glue it just so I can do the rest without filming it, and then kind of make the video a bit shorter. So anyways, what I did was I cut this, so these are now offset, right? There we go. They're now offset. I cut off one of the bottoms. Now it fits on there kind of like a puzzle because these are offset as well. So get your glue. This is the wrong kind of glue. Okay, so I just spent like the last 10 minutes trying to figure this out because my original plan didn't work at all. So the glue I have doesn't work, so I'm going to go with the hot glue gun. And the pattern, I had to kind of mix it up a little bit and make some different cuts. But anyways, here's what I have so far. So on the bottom, it's, yeah. That's what it looks like. Yeah, the white stuff is the glue that didn't work. So I'll have to use some other stuff. But anyways, 
So that's the bottom broke up into four pieces. And this piece overlaps coming across. This piece attaches to here. This piece to here. And this piece to here. I got my hot glue gun. Well, I got my mother's hot glue gun. I need to go buy one. Anyways, I'm going to start gluing all these together. So the sword needs a bit more glue. It's uh, not too stable right now, but I'll work on it and get her good eventually. But for now, I'm gonna put the handle on. So I'm just gonna measure it up a little bit. And there we go. Now I'll just put these on. You won't even see it's there. All right, next, you're gonna get your wooden dowel, put it in the middle of the handle. If it's not long enough, you're gonna have to cut it to shape. There we go. Now, obviously, that's not gonna fit into too well when we put the other piece on. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to carve out a little groove in here that will fit this, and then carve the exact same groove on this side. Okay, so I cut two grooves out. Make a hot glue gun again. And there we go. So I'm just going to let that dry up a little bit and then we'll start moving on to the final stages. I'm going to put a white coat on this first because it's, since it's so dark, I'm afraid that that's going to bleed through the other paint I use. So using this should help out a lot. All right, so this is mostly dried. Uh, it's still a little wet on the other side, but I don't really care. I'm trying to blast through this one as usual. That's why I'm making mistakes. So I painted it white. It doesn't have to be perfect, right? It's only the first coat. And I'm gonna get this uh, green blue. I don't even know how to pronounce that, but found it at my mother's house. So I'm gonna borrow hers and bring it back to her later. And I'm just gonna paint one of these blades this color. And there we go, so there's one of the blades. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing, but the next time I'm gonna use a green. Uh, make sure you miss this junction in the middle, and on the other side, I'm gonna make the entire this entire thing green, and cover that green. So I'm probably gonna put a second coat on this, and then after I get the blades done, I'm gonna show you the pattern I'm gonna use on the hilt. So the first coats are on, it's making it look a lot better actually. Um, the paint job gives it the illusion that the blade is actually over the green one, so I'm liking that. So I let the paint dry overnight. It looks pretty good. Oh, I know, some of the paint came out. Bugger. I'll have to repaint that. That's no problem, though. But anyways, the sword is pretty stable. I found out going this way, but when you pop them outside, it's not so much. But anyways, that's something for later. Next, I'm going to paint the handle. So I'm going to start with green. That up a little bit. Now from the pictures I see, it's an emerald green. I didn't have emerald green, I didn't want to go out and buy some. So I'm just kind of mixing colors together to try and get the green. This, this is classic green. And then I mixed up a little bit of a teal with it. Just a tiny few drops. There we go. So, once that's all painted, get your blue paint, and then paint everywhere that you see is white. There we go, I'm gonna let that dry and I'll probably put a second coat on. All right, you guys, before I just kind of give you the final little details on this, I'm going to answer a question a lot of you ask me, and that is, how do you figure out how to build all these things, especially with, like, scrap materials? And the answer to that would be my father. 
ever since I was little, he was getting me to take things apart and rebuild them and just kind of figure out how things work. Uh, I remember spending time in the basement just building things. That was it. That was a good afternoon for me back when I was little. So without him, a lot of these builds probably wouldn't happen because that's where a lot of my creativity came from. And on the Splinter Sun Night Vision goggles and uh, the Assassin's Creed Hidden Blade, those are just the two off the top of my head. He, uh, he helped me with those ones. I gave him a call and he just gave some input on it and gave me a few extra ideas. So without him, a lot of these builds wouldn't happen. So uh, if you could do me the favor of doing him a favor and just go follow the link to the Axe Apollo space mission, it's in the description, and click vote beside his name. It takes less than 15 seconds, I've timed it, and it goes through Facebook and that's just to make sure that you only vote once. It doesn't screw up anything on Facebook. So that would be awesome, you'd be helping a dream come true and everything. Back to the sword then. So, for under $15, it turned out pretty good. It's safe, it's made out of foam, convention safe, Halloween safe, safe for your kids, I guess. I wouldn't want them swinging around the house because they could break something. But, it's not bad. I was originally gonna have the, uh, the blades crossing each other, but I got confused and made it more complicated than I had to, and I just screwed it up a little bit, but it still looks fine, it works fine. I was gonna darken the paint here where it actually crosses to give it the illusion. But uh, if you have any questions of the method I was originally going to do, or this method, or anything else, just email me at orange-buy.com, or you can add me on Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instructables, or you can just message me on uh, YouTube here. But uh, yeah, and I'm guessing if you're here, you like The Legend of Zelda, so follow the links in the description. I'm going to post my parody, or my first parody, my last parody. Uh, if you like Zelda, you'll probably get a kick out of them. But yeah, so... Email me if you have questions, um, and vote on what you guys want to see next.